Yeah, so my name is Craig Hughes. Um, so I'm currently a basketball coach for the Portsmouth Under-16 team. And on the side of that as well, I run Chainnet Apparel, which is a clothing brand, which I've been using for the last two years to promote youth, uh, British, British basketball uh, inside the country. But it's also got a bit of a cult following outside the country as well. So I'm born and bred in Portsmouth. Um, so to begin with, um, I used to play on the outdoor courts, which I'm sure a lot of people do. So local to me, um, there was a court called Alexandra Park. So after school, uh, every day, I'd take my ball down there and just practice. So I didn't know where there was to go and play. So I just, uh, me and my brother and my friends used to go down there and we didn't have any specific coaching. So we used to watch the guys on the telly at the time. And that's where we sort of studied and worked out roughly how to play the game of basketball. Uh, I played for Portsmouth, and so I would have been about maybe 13, 14 years old. So I, always, I could never find anyone my own age to play with. So I was always playing um, an age group uh, above my age. So I played against my brother and um, that competition. So I played for Portsmouth at that age. And then when I moved up to under 16, I moved over to Solent Stars. Uh, that's now known as Solent Kestrels. Um, so I, there I learned the finer details of the game, uh, I learned how to shoot properly, I learned all the mechanisms within every sort of shot that there is in basketball <clears throat> and it really improved my game. Um, unfortunately I didn't see it out at Solent and it was a lot easier for me, I didn't drive at the time so it was a lot of travelling for my parents and I made the decision that I was going to step away from Solent. Uh, I then went back into Portsmouth. I hadn't lost interest in playing basketball, um, so I still wanted to play, so I played for Portsmouth. I think I was probably, at this point, playing for the men's team. I was about 17. And I found that a lot of things for me at that time were starting to click. So I was able to uh, dunk the ball a lot comfortably. So when I was about 16, that was when I first started dunking, uh, but it was quite basic. When I got to 17, uh, I felt I was a lot more athletic. I was probably about six foot, six foot one at the time. and just felt like, yeah, all I wanted to do was just, as much as I could, I was just playing basketball. So whether it was at Portsmouth or at college, I was always playing basketball. And for me personally, before I joined Solent, I, um, I was going for England trials. <coughs> and the system was, it was, they drop people after training sessions. We'd go have a six hour training session, uh, depending on your performance. And uh, it started off with, I can't remember how many people to begin with, um, let's say, the initial trial was probably about 50 people that then got cut down to about 30, <coughs> then to about 20, about 15, then slowly one, one by one. And I kept making every stage and it got to a game where we played another region and then I was going to try and merge the two teams together. Um, so that was a game where we had scouts there, people watching with their notepads and everything. Um, I felt I had a really good game and I must have been 14. I was a really quiet kid. like. I was quite shy back in the day, but I had the confidence when I didn't hear my name to go up to the coach at the end and sort of say, I didn't hear my name, was, it, was there a problem or something? I mean, I didn't know where it come from, but I was, just, I was really upset, like um, I, didn't, I didn't get to the next level. But that was a bit of a knockback, but my, initial, my first thing I did, I think we had a, like a three hour drive for me and my dad on the way back. First thing I did, I went and got my ball and just went to the park and just carried on playing. So for me, it was all about playing the game of basketball. And that's all I ever thought about. I didn't really, and maybe I should have done, looking back, I, I wish I did. I never really looked past the next week or something like that at all. It was just always about just playing basketball. So the fact that I haven't made it, I don't feel any regret or anything like that. I had a bit of a hiatus, so I stopped playing. Um, I went to, I was sort of slowly losing it. I was just sort of almost turning up. This, I must have been about 21 maybe. I was just turning up, playing, going home. And it was becoming a little bit mundane. It was like, I didn't want to let anyone down, so I'll just go. And that was when I was playing for Portsmouth. And then um, I didn't feel like I'd um, lost my game or anything like that at all. I just felt like my attitude had changed. Um, but there was a tournament we went to and um, I didn't get much playing time. And I felt like it was a, like, I really didn't get any playing time. It was like I'd like done something. And I was at a Benet Zen. I started to sort of 
increase, like lose interest in it a little bit uh, because basically one in, in this well not this country as such but if you've got a decent program good but if not once you get past say under 16 under 18 that's almost it for you You're just going to play for a local league team and that's sort of what started to happen to me I still love basketball, don't get me wrong, but I just didn't really, I just sort of cut off and just sort of drift in and out a little bit in between that eight years. Um, about two years ago, um, I felt quite ill, like really ill. So I had a couple of months off work and <laughs> that, that was a long time really just by myself. And um, my nan passed away not too long before that as well. And I was sort of at a point where I was like, you know, what do I actually enjoy? And the first, the first obviously, answer was basketball. So, like, okay, uh, I need to make some sort of life out of basketball. I don't know how I'm going to make it happen, but I'm just going to have to try and make it happen. So, I've always said about coaching uh, for years and just never done it. So, I was like, okay, well, that's the first thing. Let me do that. So, I'm quite close with the guy who runs the Portsmouth setup, and he was actually looking for coaches at the time as well. So, I just turned up one day and just sort of said, yeah, I can help. And then they got me along to the uh, to the under 16 team, and then from there, I just absolutely love coaching. So it sort of made me want to play more as well. So I play more now as well. So I play once. Well, this is before COVID. I was playing once a week, which for me at my age is, is absolutely fine. The thing is now I've learnt so much, and I just wish that looking back, I had those same tools at the time. And they and the thing is, I know obviously I'm older and more mature, but those tools were probably available to me at the time. Well, they would they would have been available to me at the time. So part of me does think now more than I did back then. So I think now, if I applied this, um, I had a lot of good encouragement from really high up coaches as well. And I do get annoyed with myself that I didn't pursue it. But uh, for me as a person, I know what to invest my time in so I know that I can't change anything and so I just have to quickly move on. Look, look right over here, right over here, there's a goal right there. Get your money, get the ball, let's go. So yeah, so from the beginning, um, I just knew of a way that I could print t-shirts. Obviously, I didn't really just print any old t-shirts, so I um, started printing basketball t-shirts. Um, but at that same time, I found out there were a few brands in the UK, and usually something like that would put me off because I was experimenting something completely new. I had no idea what it, you know what it was all about, um, but I kept pushing myself to do it, to, to keep going, to keep going, keep going, and eventually I bought out. Um, just some kids t-shirts and then it sort of, sort of sank in that it was real that I had these t-shirts and I needed to sell them. So I think it's kind of like up and coming right now in Portsmouth but there is definitely some great waters out there and I've, I'm, I've been playing for a few years now and like, I can tell that there's Portsmouth is really coming up. Yeah it's just a little hobby of mine but it's caught some of the attention of um, professional players uh, in this country and um, some ex-NBA players I know it's not current, but the thing is, where for my age, I'm into like old school NBA and old school basketball. So for me, it fits the brand really well. Uh, in regards to where it's at at the minute, to where it was at the beginning, I had no idea that it could potentially be something that that's you know what it's grown into. So I'm quite pleased in how it's performing. Um, but it's just one of those things that I'll just it'll, it'll only go as far as I can take it. So I do continue to try and push on. Uh, in regards to the clothing, um, I'd like to obviously run more products and get them out to more people and that's happening slowly. So at first it was a case of selling the stuff to people who I knew who played basketball. Um, that was a little bit of a win. Um, some people want it for their kids for when they go to, uh, when I do coaching, for, ex uh, for example. So more people in Portsmouth have started to recognise it. So people are just trying to show a bit of community spirit by buying something local. And uh, so that's helped. But a lot of um, what I'm finding is a lot of people who are similar to me are interested in it as well in regards to, they used to play basketball, haven't played for like 10 years, and now they've started to get interested in it again. 
Um, and there's quite a lot of reasons behind that, like um, the NBA used to come over here in London and lockdown, they had the last dance. I don't know if you saw the documentary, the Chicago Bulls documentary. So yeah, that I've seen episodes of it, yeah. Yeah, so that um, generated a lot of conversations. So many people would text me out of the blue and they have sort of didn't pre- appreciate what the sport um, actually looked like and how global it actually is. Because when you start throwing a few celebrities' names in there as well, people start to sort of show an interest. Yeah, I'd say I'm definitely on the on the right track for me, which is doing the, the clothing stuff. And the thing is, when people see the designs of the clothing, um, some people said, oh, yeah, that's definitely you. That oh, definitely suits you. Oh, that's, I can tell you come up with that. You know, that sort of thing. So mm. it's, it's, it's different, but it works for me. adventure and I can hardly wait earth is a prison I need a great escape you know I'm in my zone when I'm up in outer space you know I'm in my zone when I'm up in outer space you know I'm in my zone when I'm up in outer space you know I'm in my zone you know I'm in my zone I took a bite of the glory I tell you how it tastes